Hi, I'm Torin. I'm a Creative Code Fellow here at Gray Area in San Francisco. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a sensor node for the Data Canvas Sensor City project. Inside this box, we have several sensors that are going to measure information about our urban environment. And there's also a computer the size of a circuit board that's going to send that data into the cloud. And we're going to use that data to make some awesome artworks. So today, we're going to do four things. We're going to assemble the sensor. Then we're going to install it in the housing. Then we're going to program it. And finally, we're going to install it somewhere in the urban environment where we can capture some meaningful and interesting data. First, uh, some tools that you might want to have on hand. A steel clamp. We'll use this to hang our sensor outside. Uh, some Velcro or some 3M dual lock tape. This stuff is great. Some wire ties. These will help our project look a little bit neater and keep things organized. Some electrical tape or probably any tape will do and some scissors. This is the box that you should have received from Seed Studio. The first thing we want to do is to lay out all of our items in front of us so we can see each of these sensors is labeled on the bottom. So this is our digital light sensor. It's going to communicate with the computer, sending zeros and ones to tell us information about the light that's in our environment. We have a sound sensor, and actually it has a microphone on top. So that little guy is going to measure sound pollution. This is our temperature and humidity sensor. We have our air quality sensor, which is going to measure the levels of combustible gases. A UV sensor, which is going to tell us how much ultraviolet light is being cast. And a dust sensor that's going to measure the amount of particulate matter floating around in our environments, such as the dust that comes out of an old bus. Each sensor comes with a cable, and all of them are the same except for this dust sensor. You can see that it's kind of special and has only three wires. Everyone else has four. Each of these cables plug directly into our sensors and we don't need to do any soldering. It only fits in one way and these sockets are designed to fit perfectly. Cool, now that we know which sensor is which, we can go ahead and plug in all the cables. Now we're ready to plug our sensors into our computer, which is located on this red circuit board. This is the Cduino board. It has a Wi-Fi capability. That's what this green antenna is for. And it runs the Arduino platform, which hackers and DIY enthusiasts are pretty familiar with. Our sensors don't actually plug into this board. For that, we're going to use this Grove base shield. These are connectors that are going to do all the wiring for us. These blue headers correspond directly to the yellow headers on the other board. We're going to fit it right on top and make sure that it's level. And once all of these pins are in the right holes, you should be able to just push it down. It doesn't go all the way, so just make sure that you secure it, but don't force it further than it needs to go. On the Grove board, you'll see that there's a switch. We want to put it into the five volt side, so go ahead and do that now. There's also a reset button in case later on we need to reset the power. Our Grove Shield has labeled ports. A stands for analog, D stands for digital, and I2C is another communication protocol that sensors use to transmit data to the computer that we're now plugged into. Each sensor has to plug into a specific port, so we're gonna plug in our analog sensors first. The sound sensor goes into A0, the air quality sensor is going to go into A1. The UV sensor is going to go into A2. Remember, be gentle because these electronics are somewhat fragile. Digital light sensor is going to go into the I2C socket. Dust sensor will plug into D7. And finally, we will plug the temperature sensor into D4. Cool, now we're all plugged in. We have created an entire circuit 
of sensors that are going to be uh, transmitting data over the internet. All we need to do is install it into our weather resistant housing. All of our sensors are going to go inside this box except for UV and digital light sensors. So just keep that in mind. I'll just put a little bit of this sticky Velcro or you can use tape or really anything that's not conductive, that's not made of metal, to situate your board. I'm going to place my board in the top left hand side of the box. The top has these three tabs and the bottom has these two holes. You want to take your USB cable and put it through the bottom hole underneath the board and go ahead and plug in the board. All these sensors are gonna fit pretty snug inside of this box, so we need to put them in a specific location. Our air quality sensor is going to go all the way on the right here so that air can flow through the bottom of this hole and we can measure the combustible gases in our air. So I've put a Velcro on the bottom and I can just push it down there. This part can get a little bit uh, hairy, so just be gentle while you're installing the sensors. Next, we want to put the temperature and humidity sensor in the middle of the case. I'm going to face it downwards. And then the dust sensor is going to go next to that one. You want to situate it so that the, the silver part is facing upwards. And it, again, it fits right in the box. Great. And then finally, we want to put the sound sensor on top of the temperature sensor. Here's where it gets really tight. Later on, we're going to slide the case on, so you need to make sure that the sound sensor is pretty snug inside the box. So that I can slide the case through this ridge that's on the side. So it needs to be below that ridge. Finally, we're going to kind of tighten up these wires a little bit, make sure it's not too crisscross. This is our digital light sensor and our UV ultraviolet sensor. I've gone ahead and put them together like this and also put Velcro on the bottom. These sensors actually need to go outside of our box and I'm going to put them on the bottom like this. Great. Let's take our green Wi-Fi antenna and put it through the bottom hole, the same one as the USB cable. On the back, there's some white adhesive tape, so you can remove that, and that will allow us to affix the sensor to the housing. So I'm just going to put it on the bottom like this. We're good to go. It does look a little bit chaotic, so I'd like to add some order and clean up these cables. We might need to unplug some of them, but what I'll do is kind of bend the cables neatly and wrap some tape around it, or you can use the wire ties for that as well. This will allow our uh, cover to fit on the box a lot easier. I taped the wires a little bit so that it looks better. You can see there's no moving parts in case the sensor blows in the wind or something like this. The top of our cover is where the indentation square is. Make sure that the wires are in the notches and then you should be able to slide the case on fairly easily. If the cover doesn't slide on easily, you need to clean up your wires and make sure that the ridge on the inside is free. But it should slide right on. But now, we're ready to go do some programming. If everything is working properly, you should be able to slide your case off and you'll see that there's lights blinking. Okay, so now we're ready to program the Cdreno Cloud so that it, we can submit the data that we track using our sensors and send that to our servers and post that data on the internet. The first thing you want to do before we get started is to go to datacanvas.org slash sench your dash city and here you'll be able to download all of the resources and code necessary to complete this process. You'll also need to go to the Arduino website and go to download, 
where you'll be able to download the current version of their software. We are using a Arduino Yoon, so you want to download the 1.5.8 beta version. I've had great success if I'm using a Mac with the Java 6, but you can try out the if this is your first time plugging your Cduino cloud into your computer, you should see a network show up in your Wi-Fi settings called Dragino. That's the network that we're going to connect to so that we can configure the sensor. Go ahead and connect to the Dragino network. If you cannot find this network, you can also plug your sensor directly into your Wi-Fi router with an Ethernet cable. Now that we're connected, we should be able to go to a browser and type arduino.local. Alternatively, you can type the IP address of the sensor and connect to it directly. This will take you to the homepage for the Arduino Yoon. The default password is going to be cduino with three E's. Once you've logged in, you can go ahead and click on the system settings. And this is where we will configure our board uh, to our own personal preferences. You can give it your own name. I called mine Athera. And you need to have a password that is at least eight characters. So I am not typing passwords right now. And you need to select your time zone. And finally, select a Wi-Fi network. So we're going to connect to my network wireframe and enter in your password. And now you can click configure and restart. This will restart your Cduino cloud and connect it to your own Wi-Fi network. At this point, you can make a sandwich or do a crossword puzzle or check some social networking media sites. Now you can go up to your Wi-Fi settings and connect to your own Wi-Fi network as you normally would. You should be able to type the name of your Cduino cloud, whichever one you gave it, and .local, and that will take you to the same interface. This means that the sensor node is properly connected to my own Wi-Fi network. Okay, so now we need to install the Arduino software, add some libraries, and upload our code to the Cduino cloud. Go ahead and go to your downloads folder where you should find the zip file that has the Arduino program in it. I'm on a Mac and the installation process is as easily as dragging and dropping the Arduino program into the applications folder. If you're on Windows, there should be an installer of some sort, but either way, it's fairly simple. Go ahead and open the Arduino program. Great. So in the Sense Your City folder that we shared on the Sense Your City site, you'll find some libraries as well as the code, which is called Sense Your City. Go ahead and open that code. So here we need to do three things. We need to add our own private user ID and private key, and this will allow us to track our own sensor individually. We also want to add our latitude and longitude coordinates so we know exactly where the sensor is located on the map. Before we modify the code for our specific sensor, we need to add some external libraries to our Arduino library. You can do this in two ways. You can go to Sketch, Import Library, Add Library, and navigate to your library and add each folder individually. Alternatively, an easier way that I found is to just copy and paste or drag and drop these libraries into the folder called Documents, Arduino, Libraries, and you can paste them here. You can verify that the folders were properly added by going to Sketch, Import Library, and you should see them here. Also, if you try to actually upload the code, it won't work because you don't have the libraries. So let's take a step back. Once we have installed the Arduino software and the necessary libraries that were included in the Sensor City folder, we're now able to modify the code, upload it to the Cduino cloud, and get the sensor node connected to our servers where we'll be constantly submitting information. Open up the file which was included in the Sensor City folder called sensorcity.ino. 
This will open in the Arduino program. There's three things we need to do. We need to add a user ID, our private key, as well as our longitude coordinates followed by our latitude coordinates so that we'll know exactly where on the map our sensor is. First, let's add our longitude and latitude coordinates. The easiest way to do this is to open a browser and go to mygeoposition.com. If you have any trouble navigating the site, you can go to the top left-hand corner where there are a bunch of different languages that you can choose from. Enter in the address where your sensor is located. I'm currently located at Gray Area in San Francisco, so I'm going to calculate my geodata, and hey, this is where I am. Here's my latitude coordinates followed by my longitude coordinates. I'm going to click this button, copy XY, and now I want to paste those coordinates into the code in the Arduino software. So go back over to Arduino, and in between the brackets, beside longitude, latitude, go ahead and paste your coordinates. Now, we need to do one thing. We need to reverse the order. We actually want it to be longitude followed by latitude. That's the typical protocol when you're sending geodata. You don't need a space. By this point, you should also have received a private ID and a private key, which will allow us to distinguish which sensor is communicating what data. Copy your ID where it says user ID goes here and copy your encoded authorization value where it says private key goes here. This will ensure that your sensor is the only sensor that's allowed to upload this data. Feel free to browse through the code and have a look at the processes that are going on, but be sure not to edit any of it or add a commas or space bars or slashes as it could ruin everything. Go ahead and click verify and this will cause the Arduino software to make sure there are no errors in your code. If there are, you'll need to go back and fix them. And then you're ready to upload. Once you have uploaded your code, you should be able to go to the Tools, Serial Monitor, and here's where we'll see what the Cduino is doing. So it's set the time, it's ready to stream, if everything is working properly, you should see this feed constantly uploading data to the site. The last thing we want to do is to make sure that data is being posted onto our servers. There's a link in the code. Go ahead and copy this link. Paste it into a web browser. And replace the user ID goes here with your own user ID. Now we should be able to see that data is currently being posted. Awesome, so we've confirmed that our sensor is operational, that it's communicating with the data servers and that the data is uploading. Now all we need to do is to place the sensor somewhere outside where we can gather some meaningful data. So I'm standing in front of Gray Area in the Mission District of San Francisco. This is a really vibrant and lively area. It's constantly in flux. There's buses going by every 30 seconds or so. Uh, marches, protests, construction, and a lot of development as well. So I want to mount this on the roof of Gray Area in an area where it won't be exposed to foot traffic, but we'll also be able to capture all the data that's all around us right now. So to install the sensor, uh, we just need to do a couple things. I want to attach this USB cable to the top of the sensor with uh, this wire tie, one of the ones that I showed earlier on. And we're also going to use this clip to hang it outside. So I'm just going to use this wire tie to uh, take the tension off of the USB cable so that it will hang uh, the right way. You can lock it down like this. And now our sensor will hang like this. So this wire tie will take off the tension from the bottom so that our sensor will hang the right ways up. And now these sensors won't be directly facing rain or other elements. Now the only thing we need to do is plug it in. You can look inside to see some lights, make sure that it's on, and now we're ready to go hang it outside. 
So as long as your sensor will hang right and you have one of these clips, you can really attach it to anything. I'm just going to uh, clip it to this ledge right here where it'll be secure. There's a, a bunch of ways you could do this, but uh, this should be perfectly acceptable. It might take some experimentation to find the right spot and you need to make sure that your Wi-Fi can reach, but this looks totally fine. Great, that's it. Now we're ready to sense our cities. I hope you learned a bit about electronics, fabrication, open source programming. And now we're sending 100 of these sensors all around the world. Those sensors are going to upload data to our website, datacanvas.org, and artists and programmers, hackers, can take that data to take the invisible and make it into something really beautiful and interesting, and hopefully reveal some information about our cities that we didn't know before. So I hope you will continue with us with the Sensor City project. And and I can't wait to see what everybody does with it.